Hi, thank you for visiting my RC channel. My name is Bill and I'm a RC radio control enthusiast and I also do RC reviews. Thank you for joining me for this review of this eShine EX4 5G Wi-Fi FPV drone that comes with a 4K camera a 3-axis stabilizer gimbal, ultrasonic altitude hold, and optical flow positioning. It comes in this box, and in this nice nylon carry case, or carry bag. Got a pocket in the front here with a zipper. Hooks for shoulder strap. A nice soft quality carry handle pouch at the back here with some velcro to secure it closed and if I open it up it comes packaged in foam like this and also got another pocket in the lid here It comes with the instruction manuals. And you can get this with one, two or three batteries. So I've got this with three batteries. Radio controller fits nicely in here. The quadcopter drone itself nicely in here that underneath here so let me just get everything out so this is everything unpackaged apart from the two additional batteries and this is what it looks like folded Now I recently reviewed this JJRC X12 Aurora and this came with a 1080p camera but these are very much the same specification but this eShine EX4 has a 4K camera but it only takes photos in 4K and records video in 1080p and I did have a bit of an issue with the app, so I'm hoping I'm not going to have the same issue with the app with this. And I also had an issue with the calibration and also not recognizing the correct distance away from the radio controller. So I had some difficulty using some of the features but it still was quite accurate in returning back to the takeoff position. To me, the main thing about these drones is this three axis self stabilized gimbal for stability and the quality of the pictures. So, the additional features like follow me, waypoint navigation, and circle and orbit mode aren't that critical. As long as this is stable, reliable, takes good quality pictures and gives a good flight time, which should be around 25 minutes. Come to the warning, make sure that unfold and unlock the arms before powering on to make sure that the gimbal is not damaged when powering on. And this is it unfolded. And these arms hold quite securely in position. Brushless motors with these foldable props and comes with two spare propellers and also two Allen hex keys. 
nice finish in this matte black and you can get it in white too like the JJR CX12 I showed you earlier main power button is on the back here so press and hold and the power's up always good to do that on a level surface got these little landing feet at the end of the arm they just come out and we've got two red LED lights on the front arms and this light on the back so no lights on the back arms it's power off just press and hold and then it powers off and under here we've got the optical flow and ultrasonic sensors that also assist the barometer with holding altitude and holding position in addition to the GPS and here is an SD card slot to record directly onto an SD card and for 4K it's best to have a minimum class 10 U3 SD card and this will take an SD card up to 32 gigabytes the camera on the self-stabilized gimbal has an 80 degree field of view the battery secures on with two clips on either side here you press and pull up to release and this is a modular battery an 11.1 volt 2400 mAh LiPo battery and this is the charging bay so the battery slots onto here like this plug the micro USB port into here this into a uh, USB output and charge up the battery so while the battery is charging the light will flash red and when it's finished charging it flashes green battery back on need to get the back in and then press down over here where the pins are and make sure this is securely locked underneath And then to fold it away, just put down these little landing stands again. And it folds up nice and compact again. And the FPV range on this should be about 1,000 meters. And the remote control range of about 12 100 meters of 1200 meters which is a good distance for this size drone it's always best to fly within line of sight and we have a look at the weight with the battery on this weighs 438 grams So if this performs well, I think this is a great value drone to get a stable picture and video. And I'm sure we'll see a lot more three axis self-stabilized gimbal drones coming out onto the market too. Now the stability with the GLONASS GPS plus the sensors and the barometer good for stability and reliably should return to home if the signal gets lost or if the battery starts getting too low the features on this using an app and gps also has smart auto follow points of interest or circle or orbit mode whichever you'd like to call it and also waypoint flight navigation also called tap and fly and because this has 5G Wi-Fi 
compatibility only, you need to make sure that your wireless device that you want to use with this is compatible for 5G Wi-Fi. And I'll put a link to this video. in the description which will give you a guideline on how to check to make sure your Wi-Fi device is 5G Wi-Fi compatible and also explain the difference between 5G Wi-Fi for this and the 5G cellular network and 5.8 gigahertz FPV. It'll also show you how to connect to Wi-Fi and the app for this is called Enjoy Fly. I've opened it up here. We have a look here. This is the interface for it. We're currently not connected. But if you look and tap on these three dots at the top here, this is quite important because here you can choose whether you want to stay in beginner mode or not. So if you leave it in, if you put it in beginner mode, it'll have a maximum distance of 200 meters and a maximum height of 120. But we need to be connected to be able to change the settings. You can choose the virtual joysticks as left hand or right hand. And to calibrate the compass, you've got to press here to start compass calibration. It's not calibrating at the moment, it's not turned on. Also do gyro calibration with it on a flat level surface. And with this we've actually got to pair the phone to the radio controller to operate it. And then also it just gives you the firmware version. We'll have a look more at the app features when we do the test flight. The radio controller comes with it. Got the antennas here. And this has got an inbuilt battery, so you don't need to supply your own batteries. And very simple. Here's the mode button, so GPS mode or manual mode. Here's a return to home or return to takeoff button. You press to go manual. One key takeoff, one key land. Short press to take a picture long press to start video and here's the main power on button looks like at the back both sticks spring loaded got a nice feel to it it should be easy enough to operate and then you can put your phone or wi-fi device that will fit into here on the back here, this clips into here, it secures in there, and phone in here. Just press and hold to power off. Comes with the instruction manual. Some good quality paper, good details, good illustrations. And here are the QR codes where you can download the app, either from Google Play or from the Apple iStore. Gives some information on the app, features and that as well. And on page 17 here, it tells you how to pair the remote controller. Basically, you'll see the remote controller and a serial number come up and the drone and a serial number come up. If they're both powered on, you need to connect to the remote controller, the serial number, and remember the serial number to make the connection. And we also get this disclaimer and safety guideline. About Wi-Fi channel settings and frequencies.
carriage, storage, transportation, etc. So now let's go and see how it performs. Okay, let's see how this eShine EX4 goes. So the first thing I'm going to do, fire on the drone. Power on the radio controller. At the moment there's a flashing blue light. Back. I'm going to go into wireless or Wi-Fi settings. Have a look. It's picked up drone, but it should pick up radio controller too. So we actually should be bound to the radio controller. Go out of that again. Here's the controller. I'm going to connect to the controller. So I have bound the phone and the radio controller ready. That's it bound to the controller. Go into the Enjoy Fly app and it always takes two times to load up. Okay. Not bound to that, please bind it. So we bind. It says bind success. Click on start flying. Okay controlled by the remote controller and we go into the settings in the top here now at the moment it's in beginner mode and normally in beginner mode it says that it should calibrate the gyro automatically but we've still got a flashing green light there I go up here it does say it's connected to three satellites but I think it is safer and I'm going to go out of beginner mode my altitude limit's 120. Got all these other things there, and RC paired. It says it's paired. Okay. So now I'm going to click on calibrate compass. And it's saying calibration success. Return. Okay. So if it doesn't say calibration success, basically you've got to press calibrate and then turn it three times horizontally flat and then it'll prompt you to change the direction. Then you put it up, nose up in the air and calibrate and turn anti-clockwise three times until it says that is successful. Now I haven't had any success with gyro calibration but let me just try again. No, just never managed there. And now it's saying it's ready to fly or ready to take off. Connected to seven satellites. So to unlock motors, so pull out. And I press the takeoff button or press and hold. I know, let me do that again. Do that again. Actually, got it. Give this a quick press. Okay, I'm going to take off manually now and see if it holds steady. Okay, holding nice and steady. Take it up a bit more. Just look at the camera angle and adjustments. Well, that's okay for now. Yeah, I'm going to just take a picture using the radio controller here. Turn it, take a picture there. Turn it, take a picture behind me. Turn it, take a picture there. And now to be safe, I'm going to also just try and take a picture using the app. I'm going to press photo here. Okay, 
Ok Try that again Doesn't give me any confirmation I'm a little bit worried about what this other writing is here Still holding steady holding that steady bring it across here put it over there okay I'm going to press it to hold video to record video okay now I can at least see that the video is recording and that's it counting down there Click on position, we're in position mode, which is fine, which should be GPS. I'm going to take it up. So there we are at a height of just over 20 meters. Angle the camera down just a little bit more. I'm going to do a pan for video because the important thing with this is the video and the quality and the stability of the video ok into the sun there view there view here there looks nice and steady responding well can't see any jerky movements which is good okay, I'm going to take it up a bit higher at a height of 32 meters and this time I'm just going to do a bit of a quicker and continuous pan for video going to click on position here so we don't have um, waypoint tracking from what I can see so let's just take it for a flight take in that direction there okay now, it looks as though my FPV screen is frozen, which is not good because I'm only at a distance of 22 meters and a height of 31 meters I know It all seems to be okay Turn Come back this way Uh, FPV screen just seems to be a little bit sort of slower but there we had a distance of 70 meters still at a height of about 32 meters let's turn again you can see it's still going well really going nicely and then just a little bit more here
distance of 120 meters away. Distance of 160 meters away. We'll see it going well. Right, distance of about 200 meters. I'm going to turn again. in this direction now. Really flying nicely, consistently. And then come back here. Searching back here. And coming back almost over here. Okay. So I'm going to just stop the video for now to save the video. I'm going to start video again. I'm going to bring it down. Here it is in front of me. Let's bring it down here. Okay, I'm going to try track. So I've got tap on position here. I click on track. Okay, please stop the video recording. So let me stop the video recording. Okay, click on track. I need to get myself in and just walk towards it and see what it's going to do. Okay, no. Just tap on here. Before using the map function, disconnect Wi Fi and open the map interface to load the map. The map should have really loaded beforehand. If I have a look here, and just take it up again. I'm going to tap a point there. Or if I click on start, okay, no navigation points can be performed. I go here, I go there. Beyond planning point, so there's obviously quite a big range here. Let's just try getting a little bit closer. There. Okay, so the way pointing here will be a little bit tricky beyond there. So if I try and z I can't really oh the bows zoom out a bit more I'll try here no okay so I'm going to go out of this go back into position go back to here right, bring it down again
can see red lights flashing at the back. It's been in the air just over 11 minutes. It shouldn't really be low battery. I'm going to turn it around here. Still got a green light on the back. Just bring it down here. Angle the camera down a bit again. I'm going to start recording video again. Let's try the orbit thing. Okay. So I think it should really ask me how many meters. Look at altitude, go back to position. I to click on position, click on orbit. Not really responding, they got 16 satellites. Battery level 60%. I need to go further away. Let's have a look. Take it up a little bit higher. Try orbit again. Go position. Try altitude. Which it should really be doing okay. Perhaps I have to be in the actual app itself to do those functions. So I'll do another flight just with the app and see if that'll work any better. The battery's down to 40%. So I'm just going to fly now and see what it's going to do when the battery starts getting low it does fly nicely, it does respond well nice and smooth doesn't have a very quick turning circle And we can't really do anything about the speed. But this is really all about the video, so it should be smooth. And I'm going to try and do jerky movements. See how the gimbal's holding. And it looks so uh, there. It's holding well. The, the FPV is still quite smooth. Just put the camera up again a bit now. Okay. Just look for Wi Fi lag. Slight lag in the Wi Fi, but you know, it responds well, and it, like I say, it doesn't turn too sharply, so I'm not expecting much from it. The battery level is still at 40%. Just 
keep it going and see how much time we can get. And we've been in the air 16 minutes already. And I want to see what happens. I'll keep it a distance away because I want to see what happens when the battery does start getting too low. And whether we'll get an alarm on the radio controller. We are recording video. I'm basically going full speed. We'll see what sort of battery life we can get. And flight time. Now I'm getting a vibration on the radio controller so, and it's saying batteries are 10% I'm just going to see what it's going to do Whether it'll automatically return to home or just land when the battery starts getting too low Going okay. Just go wait and sort of see at what level and what percentage this might initiate its own return to home. I 
still saying 10%. We've been in there 21 and a half minutes. And we're still recording video. And now it's going up. So it's initiating a return to home on its own. So it's going to go up to an altitude, I think, of 30 meters. Yeah, turning around. And now coming back. And overhead, turning around to face away, and now descending. So I'm going to stop video to save video. Here it comes down. And stop the clock. So a flight time of 22 minutes 30 seconds. Okay, great flight. So I'm going to put another battery in and we'll see if we can get uh, any of the functions and features to work when connected directly to the drone itself. So I'll post the trials and tribulations of calibration and the features and the functions on the app in a separate video or else this video is going to be too long. Here are the pictures that I took at the beginning of the flight. And I was happy with the stability and the reliability of the craft and the Wi-Fi on this. The video on the Pitch and roll axis is good, but as you probably saw, a little bit jerky on the your axis. Uh, to get this sort of stability on a craft of this value, I think it's great. A good flying time. So as I've mentioned in the video, for me, this is the main feature and benefits of this. So as long as I can get a good GPS lock, it's very stable has good reliable range and the return to home and fail safe features on low battery and signal loss is good too. So please subscribe, like, comment and share if you like my videos.